Alrighty, so a similar video to a one I made not too long ago where it was my problem with modern video games, or most modern video games. This video is about my problem with most modern movies. And like with the other videos I've done, I've written some notes down here so I can kind of keep track of what I'm saying. Um, might be pretty quick. I had less notes about this than video games, honestly. I may have had more complaints about video games, but because... I mean, it's bad what they're doing with physical media movies and all, but you don't see it where, at least not that I know of, where you're buying a movie and they're like, hmm, you want the true ending to that movie? You can pay us ten more dollars to unlock the true ending. Now, mind you, there's obviously alternate scenes, but there's not like, basically where, you know, like Callisto Protocol, where you're paying 10, 15 bucks to get the true ending of the game. You're like, okay, that's kind of shitty, but whatever dragon age 2 you're kind of getting the real ending if you play the dlc so or was it inquisition is one of those uh but yes my problem with most modern movies so my first note i have on here is i miss b movies such as and i put some examples so what i mean by that is i personally feel like hollywood is so thin on taking chances now I mean, everything has to be fucking superhero this or so cookie cutter like Oscar bait movie, you know, just so rinse and repeat like the same three kinds of movies. Now, mind you, you could even probably say in the 80s and stuff, everything was Arnold Schwartz, you know, an Arnold movie, a S uh, Sylvester Stallone movie, like that kind of aspect. But I mean... Something was clearly working right back then that it's not here. Now, mind you, back then, you had different movies like The Thing that were received horribly. And now, you know, everyone loves. And and so, I don't know if they're afraid of that or what. You would think there's enough creative freedom now where you could kind of do your own thing. So, a couple of examples I put. Is, one is this, uh, I believe, straight-to-DVD movie I've had for a long time. Uh, called Outlander, and I had gotten that from Walmart forever ago, and what it is, is it's uh, Jim Kvitzel, or whatever, he played Jesus <laughs> in The Passion of the Christ, I believe, and uh, he's a, you know, humanoid looking uh, bounty hunter that was transporting a dragon, a space dragon, because they, you know, they're space dragons where he's from. And it gets loose and he crash lands on Earth, but it's Earth during, you know, like the Viking, you know, the year like 900 something. And he has to work with the Vikings to capture and hunt down the dragon. And so, to me, it's an awesome movie. I mean, it is truly a, f a fantastic, just sci fi fantasy movie. It's got Ron Perlman in it, John Hurt, so. Um, there's a guy in there that kind of looks like uh, Carl Urban, but isn't Carl Urban. I think I had a great time with it. I watch it every now and then still. I think it was great. Uh, there's another movie, The Divide, um, like a post-apocalyptic horror movie uh, where it's like trapped in the basement. Great movie. There's great movies. That, I mean, I can't even imagine what these movies cost, but it had to be significantly less than movies now. I also put... And this might be a little bit more subjective. I put Pacific Rim and Live, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow. And I put those as B-movies because they they weren't... So one was technically an original idea. The other one is just an adaptation from a manga. But the weird thing about Edge of Tomorrow is that, it, yes, it had Tom Cruise. But it was in such a weird... I guess he had done Oblivion, but... It was this weird, like, like I don't care for Tom Cruise, but you had Tom Cruise in it. I liked his character in it, but it felt like a very cheesy sci-fi movie. But great, I love it, and I hate that I'm yawning because I I didn't wake. I woke up not too long ago, so it's kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, to to me, I don't think it did that well. I think it did good, but it's one of those things where it could be critically praised. But if it doesn't make money, you know, it's like, well, whatever. Unless, of course, it's an Oscar movie, whatever. Um, I do Pacific Rim because 
I love Pacific Rim. I mean, I can show you right here on my desk. I've got, I mean, yeah, I, I there's more, but you get the gist. I love Pacific Rim. It's such a, obviously the story is like meh, but it's such a fun movie. And I feel like it plays well on, you know, main character has, has motivation, has reasons for why things happen. Okay. Boom. Good. A satisfying action sci-fi movie. Probably one of the best, like giant Kaiju esque movies around. Honestly, I would find it more enjoyable than Godzilla 2014 more than Kong Skull Island. Not that those are bad movies. I do love those movies, but that's the kind of the idea I wanted to give with uh, B movies, quote unquote, you know. Even when I think back today, like Leviathan, Deep Star 6, um, Deep Rising, shit like that. Uh, Stay Alive. Ooh, that's a good one. It's so stupid, but I love it. Movies like that where they're just like, fuck it. Like, let's just, you know make movies but second point companies in america try so hard to spend as much money as possible to make another franchise movie series so what i mean by that is sorry my ps3 likes to randomly turn on uh <laughs> the avengers do well and so they go we need that we obviously i don't even need to explain we all know how horribly the dceu flopped which i will say on that if you have never seen the New 52 anime movies from like 2010 to I think it was like two years ago, it started technically with the Flashpoint Paradox and then officially started with um, Justice League War, I believe. And it ended with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. Phenomenal. A couple of the solo Batman movies in it are kind of eh. But overall, God, phenomenal. They did it so awesome. So it's sad to see the live action couldn't do that well. But uh, there's also the Dark Universe. Um, that, I mean, hilariously, the fact that they had the fucking balls to drop a teaser photo of like, oh, Mr. Jekyll and Hyde, you know, ooh, he was in The Mummy, hmm, uh, The Invisible Man, oh, The Wolf Man. And then they're like, oh, um, we actually bet so much on The Mummy and it failed. I've personally never seen the Mummy movie with Tom Cruise. Uh, there's that hilarious trailer. I don't. You guys already know it. People have talked about it to death. But the you know funny trailer where the audio was missing, except for the goofy audio. Um, a lot of these big franchise like they they just want everything to be like Marvel. It's like, uh, can we stop just caring solely about the money? Like, you realize you can make good money and not just have to follow the trend to a fucking T. Now, mind you, there's, um, funny enough that I pulled up Pacific Rim and I talked about Godzilla. There's the American Godzilla universe, the monsterverse. Godzilla 2014, Kong Skull Island. Godzilla King of the Monsters, Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, and then there's Monarch Legacy of Monsters. And now there's Godzilla and Kong or Godzilla, X-Kong, whatever, the new empire. And obviously it's getting gradually goofy, but people go watch those movies. People are excited um, for whatever the fuck reason. Godzilla, King of the Monsters didn't do well. I love that movie. Um, but yeah, there's a franchise that seems to be working, and I think they're doing a pretty good job about it, it seems. I mean, the toys sell, the DVDs sell, so, I mean, they're doing something right. And so it, it's... People are both, I feel like, tired of the idea, but if you do it right enough, they'll they'll come back. You know, they'll, bro, they'll give you money. Like, come on. <laughs> so, I just wish they would stop trying to make franchise movies. And this next part kind of goes into it. Imagination and creativity seems less and less. So, it kind of goes with what I've already said. Um, imagination and creativity. So, when I think of imagination when it comes to a movie, uh, recently I could think of uh, Talk to Me. I really like that movie. I've actually watched it twice in the last couple months. That was 
And hmm, I am a, you know, I love horror movies, stuff like that. But the idea to make a paranormal entity of a movie, like a social drug, like haha peer pressure event thing. Like, like how, you know, kids are like, well, like play spin the bottle, dude, or seven minutes in the closet or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, like that. But it's this hand that you talk to. Well, well you, you hold the hand and talk to a fucking ghost. It was a neat idea. And I really liked it. I liked how it would, you know, seemed at least like a metaphor, symbolism, whatever for, you know, addiction, drugs and where that can lead you. And I liked it a lot. I was like, that's imaginative. Thank you. Great creativity it makes me think of more of like the marvel movies i feel like the creativity is, is fucking dead the last marvel movie i watched was guardians of the galaxy 3 now that movie was great and talk about just like with godzilla minus one which i'll get to talk about doing something over and over again but you're able to hit it in the fucking ballpark now i didn't like guardians of the galaxy 2 but i loved guardians of the galaxy 1 Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is basically just your average movie. It's bad guy, comically evil, stop him. But then you add just great, great characters, development, and dialogue. That just makes it the most incredible experience ever. I bought it on Blu-ray immediately when I could because it's so good. But then I, I haven't seen, so you know maybe this is a little biased. I have not seen the Marvels. Um, I have not seen Eternals and I have not seen, I feel like there's one more. I haven't seen Miss Marvel or whatever that show. I haven't seen the show Echo. I haven't seen Loki. Um, I've heard most of those properties suck, but I would need to see it for myself because like Werewolf by Night, I fucking loved that. And a lot of people didn't even give it a shot because they're like, nah, dude, I'm done with Marvel. Fair reasoning, but, you know, there's a few exceptions. But overall, it does seem like the creativity is kind of... I guess with the Echo show, there's something... She's, like, mute uh, and does sign language and stuff. So that's that's cool. You know, that's something new. Um, I guess people want to keep calling it woke. But, I mean, at least it's something different. <laughs> and I haven't really looked at the Echo character, but people seem to be mad that she's, like, deaf. And it's it's inclusive. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with her being deaf and sign language. I don't... Whatever. Um, but yeah, creativity. And this actually goes into my next topic. Superhero movie fatigue. Um, so with that, with superhero fatigue, I... Like I said, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I haven't given a shit to watch anything else superhero-wise. I didn't care for Aquaman 2. And by that, I mean, I didn't watch the trailer. I don't care to go watch it. Shazam 2. I don't give a fuck to watch that. I watched Black Adam, and I was like, it's okay, you know, it's, it's just, meh, it, I mean, it's just, it's just there, you know, there's nothing else, so my cat is just sitting right here watching me, she seems to be a little mad, um, I'm trying to think if I watched any other superhero things, um, honestly, haven't even kept up with the boys, I just, uh, I don't know, it's a little different than Marvel, obviously, but, I just haven't, with with everything with the DCEU and the reboot and the blah, 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 like, and with superheroes, it's like, oh my god, how many fucking Superman movies are we going to get? How many fucking Batman movies are we going to get? How many Spider-Man movies? You know, can we, uh, can we, now mind you, did I like Across the Spider-Verse? I did. I like that. For once, it wasn't just about fucking Peter Parker and Uncle Ben and blah, blah, blah. It's a little different. Although the multiverse thing is getting a little tired. But when it comes to superheroes, for me personally, I'm like, give me a movie about Booster Gold. Make it like a dark comedy. Or make it a comedy. I don't know. That works as a comedy, in my opinion. Plastic Man. Give me a thing about Plastic Man. Or they love doing the whole anti-hero bullshit. Give me a, a movie about, you know, like how they're doing the Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Okay, give me a movie about something, you know. Change it up, my God. Venom was so close to doing such a good job. And then they were like, let's make it PG-13 and let's just make him solely basically a good guy. 
like no he's supposed to be make him fucking evil maybe like a little bit of an anti-hero like for the common good like there's carnage okay so i gotta team up with spider-man but come on man like don't be such a baby about like oh, i hate deadpool did it great they're like fuck you reddit r bam glorious both movies deadpool one and two i like those a lot i'll rewatch those logan fucking amazing really annoys me that they're bringing him back but i uh do i feel the superhero fatigue i'd say yes like i feel like my friends and i used to talk about like oh man the new marvel movie blah 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 and now i'm just like i could fucking care less I, I look at the trailer for like Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. I'm like, I will never forget how I felt that w during that time. I mean, that was the end of 10 years in the making. And I got emotional watching those movies. I don't know if I'll ever feel like th that. How obviously Guardians of the Galaxy 3 made me, you know, sad and stuff. But the feeling of like, I grew up with this thing for 10 years and it led to this moment. It should have ended. And it was a good ending. And then they're like, a month later, they're like, Spider-Man. You're like, eh. Or it was like, Shang-Chi something. And, and Endgame came out, and then it was like, immediately, turn the fucking next one out. Like, God, that's disgusting. Uh, so, n the next one I have is A24 is slowly becoming more prominent. So, by that, it's, um, I will say A24, good on them for being different. And having, you know, some originalist idea. Like I said, talk to me. I didn't give a shit for The Lighthouse. That movie annoyed the shit out of me. Um, Hered Hereditary was okay. Uh, Midsummer was pretty interesting. Um, I think overhyped to shit. But uh, I'm trying to think of another A24. There's that Neon Demon, I think. That movie was... I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. Uh, it was just really like... You know, I mean, they're they're at least trying to be different. Does it always land? No. And a lot of people like it's because there's that movie. It comes at night. I haven't watched it yet, but that pissed off a lot of people. But I mean, people are talking about the movie, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think of any other A24 movie I can think of. I feel like I might be missing a couple that I actually do like, but it's things like that. And, you know, like Blumhouse or Bloomhouse, you know, being willing to take a step and be like Five Nights or I might be wrong on the Five Nights at Freddy's part. I'd have to look that up. But I swear they're part of that. But they're taking chances on horror IPs and stuff like that. Like, cool. Hey, good for you. Uh, next point. Miss movies from the 90s to early 2000s. I've already kind of gone over that in my first point. So I, w I won't really go into that. But yeah, basically what I was saying is I just felt like there was so much more flavor back in the day. And now everything's really cookie cutter and very minimal. Um... Movies like Godzilla Minus One prove that you can make a masterpiece for less money. Yes. So, Godzilla Minus One is estimated to have cost totally, total, uh, around $15 million, I believe. Now, I can't remember if that's before ads or after ads, because, you know, the whole spiel is that, you know, ads cost, like, double or whatever the fuck. Um, but, you look at how, like, an episode of Game of Thrones cost 15 million. An episode of The Mandalorian cost 13 million. Uh, you know, all this shit is like every episode costs us, you know, 10 mil, blah, 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 over and over and over again. And then you're like, wow, this Godzilla movie is really good and looks really good. I wonder how much it costs. What? Like, because you're so used to American, whatever. You're like, 100 mil minimum? And they're like, 15 million. You're like, huh. Well, now that makes me question everything here in America. Why the fuck is shit so expensive to make here? Like, hold on. What are we doing wrong where a fucking great ass, visually pleasing looking Godzilla, like, I mean, that, that shit looked good. So does Shin Godzilla. How can they do that for 50 million? And then we can't, we, we can only, like, that cost is the same as one fucking episode of a TV show here in America. I'd have to look at more of the logistics on that, but... That is just insane to me. Um, Godzilla Minus One is amazing. Definitely my uh, my movie of the year. I would say it's Godzilla Minus One, Oppenheimer, 
and then Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Oppenheimer was another one. I mean, that one cost a little bit more, but you know, you can have biography movies all the time and stuff like that, but God, it was done so, so well in Oppenheimer. And yeah, Godzilla Minus One, go watch that. My God, when it comes on Blu-ray, buy it and watch it. Even people who probably don't like kaiju movies will like that. Sorry, I gotta get, uh, I gotta get my cat out. She is being too crazy and shaking the screen. But yeah, so another topic of this. Would love video game adaptations if done right. So uh, movie wise, I can think of Sonic, Doom, uh, World of Warcraft, Assassin's Creed, Prince of Persia. Hmm. But then there's TV shows like The Last of Us, Halo. So when I think about movies, so Doom with The Rock, stupid ass movie. Guilty pleasure, of course. Um, Sonic, I have not seen, but I've been told is a fun movie. Warcraft, I enjoyed, but I'm not the biggest World of Warcraft person. And so, you know, I know it could seem a little... Um, ow, she bit me. I don't know, bias, whatever, unfair, but I like to try my best to separate the movie from, you know, when people are like, it's not identical to the comic book. Well, I I used to be like that way too, and it's like, I have to remember, like, this is a movie adaptation. It's not a scene-for-scene -scene thing, you know, because people get so butter about that. Um, yes, like like Dead Space. I, you know, there's always talks about that, the Bioshock movie. My God, that's been, ever since Bioshock One. They're like, "Ooh, Bioshock movie coming out next year." Well, it's been you know, in three years' time, it will have been twenty years since Bioshock One come out has come out, and uh, there's not been one movie. There's been no teaser photo. There's nothing. So that fucking sucks. Assassin's Creed, the movie. I enjoyed that movie a lot. Um, people kept bitching, saying that there's not enough of the assassin stuff. Having rewatched it. I thought it was pretty evenly balanced, and it just reminds me of the games back then when, you know, it would cut you back to the modern day story quite often, so, I don't know, didn't think too much of it. Last point, hopefully movie companies can undergo, uh, let's see, can understand you can take time to create movies and not rush. Example, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, great example, because that first one I was reading that, no, I was like, huh? Lord of the Rings. The best movie franchise ever created. Visually amazing. For a movie that came out 24 years ago, technically. Started being made in like 1998, 1999. Released in 2000. Um, incredible. The fact that the first, The Fellowship of the Ring is 24 years old. And it still looks amazing looks incredible there is just an atmosphere and filming on that movie that just cannot be beat the practical effects the everything i mean it is just incredible and then you go to the hobbit so the first hobbit comes out in like 2011 2012 something like that and you know there's a whole controversy because it was shot in like 48 frames whatever there's just a strange filter over The Hobbit where you're like, it looks noticeably fake. And you each movie, The Hobbit 1, 2, 3, you're like, there's just this like glaring CG, blatantly obvious CGI and really no practical effects. And so it looks so fake. And there's like a bloom almost, or it looks like a polished video game, basically. And so, hey, what the? Since she, she freaking invited me, um, and so there was just something about you look at the Hobbit movie, uh, the Lord of the Rings movies, all three of them. There, you know, even they used some CGI then, but even the CGI then, just like Jurassic Park, holds up extremely well in today's time. And yet you look at the Hobbit, and you're like, what were they doing? And then you start looking behind the scenes, and you realize that. Peter, I mean, the amount of studio, I mean, just horrible, horrible studio stuff was going on where he had zero time really to fully plan out the movie and do what he wanted. 
and have the time to make practical stuff and just do like CGI because the time crunches. He didn't have the the patience from the studio and the time like he did on Lord of the Rings, sadly. Um, another thing, not necessarily with time, but The Thing, 2011. I don't think it's the worst movie. It's a little... I don't like that they call it a prequel and then absolutely change stuff, but... There was all this incredible behind-the-scenes footage of practical effects. And then the studio's like, nope, CGI. Why? Why would you do that? And the practical effects looks, looked badass. And it was all CGI. Like, come on. Why would you do that? Like, I'm so tired. I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but I'm so tired. I mean, this goes not just with movie companies. Companies in general, like... These higher up executives are making these decisions and it's like, do you not like money? For the love of God, stop thinking it at such a dumb level. If the thing 2011 would have been practical effects and they would have left, instead of it being that stupid CGI monster at the end and the cubes and stuff, the actual alien pilot, everything, I think it would have been received a hundred times better. And people would be talking about it right now in a more positive manner. But it's like, oh, well, I didn't get to make that decision. The higher-ups did, even though I'm the director. It's like, why are we... Oh, I hate that. And so I just... I would like to see some level of a change. You know, when it comes to superhero movies, like, come on, like, make the genre a little bit more different. Like, it's okay. Like, you can make a movie like Logan. You can make a movie that's more like Deadpool. You can make a movie more like Guardians of the Galaxy 1. You can make it for teenagers, for adults. Like... It doesn't all have to just keep being the same shit over and over again. Like, let's just, come on, give it a little bit of a difference here, please. So, I guess that's going to be it for this video. I just, once I spoke about the video games, I really wanted to talk about the movies. And that is about to go to, that is about it for me. The camera is shaking because this damn cat keeps coming up here. But, um, yeah, that'll be it. As always, thank you for watching.